Hello, I hope you are doing great. Today we are going to see a basic introduction to development with Blazor. What is Blazor? Blazor is basically a framework which allows you to create rich web-based applications using .NET instead of JavaScript, while you still will still be able to invoke some JavaScript the core of Blazor is actually to allow you to create those applications with .NET code. Okay, so as you can see in the page, you can create rich interactive UIs using C Sharp instead of JavaScript. You can share server side and client side app logic written in .NET. You can render the UI as HTML and CSS for wide browser support, including mobile browsers. You can integrate with mobile hosting platforms such as Docker. And there are some advantages, of course, the one for writing C Sharp instead of JavaScript. This actually allows for .NET developers that may not know JavaScript. For example, if you are a .NET Windows Forms developer, a uh, SAML developer, no, UP, um, UPF developer, or UPF developer, you may not know a lot of web development. So using Blazor actually allows you or reduces the learning curve for writing web applications. <coughs> okay. It also leverages the existing .NET ecosystem and .NET libraries. Uh, it allows you to share uh, app logics across, across server and client. Uh, benefit from .NET performance, reliability, and security. It allows you to stay productive with Visual Studio on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. OS. And it can build on a common set of language frameworks and tools that are stable, feature-rich, and easy to use. Okay, so Blazor actually combines some of components or features that are in some of the most used frameworks. For example, uh, some of the programming logic or features that frameworks such as Angular has, Blazor takes a little bit of it and allows you to do it with .NET code, C Sharp code. Okay, let's go to an example of creating a Blazor application. So, we will see, we will create a new application. Uh, in this case, I am going to use um, Visual Studio for Mac, but you can use Visual Studio 2019 or any other Visual Studio that actually supports Blazor. The only difference is when you create the template, the templates are named a little bit different in Visual Studio for Mac and in um, Visual Studio 2019. But in Visual Studio 2019, you can search for Blazor. This will return uh, one template that says Blazor app, and then it requests it will request you to choose if it will be a server app or a web assembly application. We are going to start first with Blazor server app. .NET Core 3.1, we are not going to use authentication. My Blazor server demo, Blazor app server demo. Okay, I am going to create the project. So, one of the things that you will notice in here is that. Um, the template creates a web project. We have the www root. We have some Razor pages. Uh, we have the usual .NET configuration, the program CS and the startup. This is the appjson2 and 
we have the pages and some data that was created some data and classes that were created by default okay so now if I go for example to the fetch data you will see that in here <coughs> I have this weather forecast class and this over over reading uh, method it's actually called being executed in the page itself and it's invoking forecast service get forecast async you will see that here this forecast service <clears throat> is actually defined here in this weather forecast service and we have the class in here um, if I remember correctly in some of the old templates uh, it may be in the ones from Visual Studio uh, 2019 there are no services created and the actual class is generated in the fetch data at the end of the file but that doesn't really change much now if we go to the startup.cs we will see that for the service it actually created a singleton so basically any instance of the weather forecast we will only have one instance of the weather forecast service throughout the whole application the weather service is going to have the calls to uh, is going to have the retrieval of data or whatever we want to have in the service okay so and we will see that in the fetch uh, in the fetch data we will have this inject weather forecast service forecast service which is the instance that is being used in the on the initialize async method so it injects the class it is I was defined as a singleton we will always get the same instance and we will be able to call the um, the methods that we need to call something that you need to see here or that we need to be aware of is that we actually created this on the um, blazor server so in this case everything runs in the server and only the generated HTML is uh, passed to the um, to the client something that you actually may want to see is how blazor works Blazor actually works with a generated JavaScript that um, is for the framework. Um, let's see. Here we are not going to say it actually, I think, because it's not using WebAssembly. Uh, there's a difference um, we will see that in here we have framework blazor server.js and this is basically how the application the web application interacts with the server side with all of the rest of the logic in this case we only have this let's go to fetch data and that's what we have in there nothing actually changed okay now 
Dealing with it is that pretty much most of the application executes on the server, so there is a lot of rich client-side logic that may become slower because everything is on the server. We may be able to see here, you will be able to see, for example, Blazor server. It says that it decouples the component rendering logic from how UI updates are applied and it provides support for hosting Razor components on the server in ASP.NET Core. The runtime handles sending UI events from the browser to the server and applies UI updates. Actually, one of the main difference is that a Blazor server uses a signal R um, component or signal art calls to um, have the synchronization through the server and the actual application. Web assembly is basically your application running in the client side and you are able to invoke some of the of server site functionality by using let's say API calls. One of the advantages of WebAssembly is that it can access the full functionality of the browser via JavaScript using things such as interrupt. The .NET code is actually executed via, via WebAssembly. WebAssembly is actually a standard that allows you to pretty much have uh, compiled code in web. Okay, so we already saw a small example for uh, my this one with demo. Now I am going to create a new project. I am going to delete this one. And I am going to create a new project, but this time I will choose Web Assembly. We have the option to choose if it's going to be ASP.NET Core hosted or not. I will choose ASP.NET Core hosted so we can actually have both the Web Assembly for the client and the server where we are going have the .NET Core server where we are going to have our uh, logic that we do not need to have in the um, client side. For example, um, the client side should never, never invoke a database directly or secure APIs directly. Um, Pretty much, you should never access secure resources from the public web application, and instead, you should do it from a secured application, which is going to be the .NET Core API hosted in a server. Okay, my. Blazor demo app uh, core hosts my blazer core host demo uh, yeah. I'm going to create the application and um, we will see that this application will have the solution will actually have three um, projects we have the client project we have the server project and we have the server project I am going to stop the video here and in the part two we will go and see more of what of how you can code with Blazor. We are going to enter in some of the details of developing with Blazor. 
thank you very much i hope you have liked the video please share it also remember to comment things that you may want to learn about dashboard.net core and unity and don't don't forget to subscribe to the channel i share it so more people can subscribe to it and get more subscribers and more visibilities thank you very much and have a great day